Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. And so it begins. So it begins again. Putting my mic on. You're adjusting your microphone. Mm hmm Making faces. No. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Awesome Hardware. This is our live show. We do it on Tuesdays at 5.30 p.m. Pacific time on twitch.tv slash awesomehardware. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, if you're joining us live, welcome. If you're watching in the future, what's it like in the future? We would like to know. Send us a message to the past and tell us what the stock market's going to do. Maybe we can make some money. I feel yeah. like you've been watching too much Back to the Future lately. Uh, I try to watch it at least once a week. But um, <laughs> So on today's show, we're going to be talking about some wonderful things, uh, mostly technology-related, although there's some that's dubious in that regard. Um, what are we going to talk about, though? We're going to talk about the AMD R9 300 series. We're going to talk about the Reddit the Reddit kerfuffle. Controversy. There's quite a kerfuffle going on with Reddit. I like that word. Um, we're gonna, I, I have a Tales from Space segment, and I also have a Conspiracy Theories segment, the ever popular. And then we also have some tech news about uh, more AMD uh, Fury stuff that's still coming out. Fury X as well as the Fury that's still not yet released. Yep. And uh, some some more like upcoming Intel stuff and that kind of thing. It's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. Um, the first half of the show is my half, and that's on, will be on my channel in the future, which is uh, YouTube's Paul's Hardware channel. Uh, the second half will be on Kyle's channel, which is YouTube's Awesome Sauce Network. Yep. Well, that's the name of his, his channel. Yeah. But um, all right, let's begin. Let's begin. Should we do announcements or beer first? Um, let's do like announcements. Announcements? Let's do some announcements. Let okay. the beers warm up a little bit. We're still oh, pretty crap. What? What'd you forget? What did I, you do? I was going to show... I had a picture of my new shirts, but I don't... I don't. Oh. Wait, wait. We've wait. just been so busy this morning that... Oh, we've uh, been, we have been busy. Hold on. I, I'm... Well, my... you, you probably got something, but make sure that you're not showing you, like, your... You will... Yeah. Your email <laughs> address or something. I'm going to try not to, but... Shoot, oh, I, I, see, a, I see your social security number. Well, we're all, no, we're not brag, broadcasting that right now. <laughs> I sent a picture of it earlier to you and uh, and to Jay. In so the in the meantime, uh, how's it going, everyone in chat? Cell, thanks for joining us. Thanks for modding as always. Yeah. Kitty, how's it going? What's DMC up, trolls, what's up, brother? All these guys in here. Where, I sent too many emails today, apparently. I am Andrew. Oh, here we go. Hola. Just for Paul. Do we have a just for Paul? There's a Just for Paul. His in name chat. is Just for Paul. <laughs> He's clearly not here for me. All right, I got it. I got. Can I someone got, make a just, my just for Kyle name so I don't feel left out? I'm sure it will happen. Is that cool? All right, no. sorry, sorry, sorry for the delay there. Here, here's here's my new shirts. Oh, there it is. Um, this is just the mock-up, but these are going to be ready by next week, I believe. In all those this colors, is my new correct? logo. I have yes, I'm going to have black, blue, and gray, and uh, those will be on my store. So. Stay tuned. Coming very soon. They look uh, very nice. We'll, we'll model them and such for you guys. Uh, however, though, if you want to buy other shirts, those are still available in my store as well as the glassware, um, such as this one, which you probably can't see very well because there's there's not enough beer in it. Yeah. We should remedy that. I, I think that's a good idea. Um, also, Kyle has shirts on his store you guys can check out if you're interested in supporting us. Yes, I do. It's not just a way to buy shirts. I mean, hopefully you guys like the shirts and everything, but it's a really good way to support our channels and everything we do as well. It absolutely is. And I did want to mention one thing that I haven't mentioned in prior episodes mm. when uh, when announcing our, our merchandise and stuff like that. What's that? The CPU cooler shirt, um, it's actually, when I restocked the inventory, I actually improved the color of the... You made it uh, the better? CPU. You just pissed off anyone who who bought that shirt. Yes, prior. My, my my shirt has a 2.0 version. The latest gonna, one is out. See the returns are going to start coming in. They're going to be like, I bought this shirt and it has coil wine. <laughs> no, what? So it's, it's a CPU to, and uh, I guess it. maybe on the fan of the CPU cool, but there's no fan there. So if you click on the shirt really quick, okay. So you see like the the CPU that's like getting raped. It doesn't look exactly gold. It's kind it's of like a an off tan. Mounted. It's like a kind of a tan color. Casually. But if you go to the third picture on the little thumbnail there. That's, uh, this is the PNG, so it's really vibrant, but you're going to get a closer, more genuine that's, that's col uh, gold color I of the see. CPU pins. More, so. more similar to your classic PCB, in theory. That's right. So go All ahead right. and buy a 2.0 shirt, and uh, let, me know, let me know in chat. All right, let's drink some beer. I'm trying to finish. This is my pre-show beer. It's beer time. Um, which I don't even... What, oh. what was this, anyway? This was good. Do we, do we have an opener? Oh. I think I do. I but, do. No, I've got one. Oh, you got one. one. Yeah. Oh, thank God. Because we're both tethered to the uh, the microphone that right now. That is important. I don't need one for mine, but here, you can start with yours. Oh, yeah. You um, have a fancy beer. Oh, other important. announcement. 
Duh, Kyle's got 100,000 subscribers now. Damn, I was hoping you'd forget. You were hoping, really? Yes, because of your tweet earlier today. Oh yeah. And now everyone's gonna, Cause, you uh, can explain. You had promised everyone that you would do shots. No, I, I was, did, that I was, was suggesting I a shot, not. one shot per subscriber. <laughs> Kyle will, <laughs> was like, why, Kyle, why couldn't I have hit 100,000 last week? Because I, I pretty much would have had about that, that amount. Last week we got pretty raucous. I can't do that um, again. <laughs> as I pour beer Kyle, in my glass. He achieves the height of YouTube success with 100,000 subscribers <laughs> and then dies of alcohol poisoning <laughs> the next day. All right, what my are you drinking, is, Kyle? My life is irony. Um, it's a Desperado India Pale Ale All right. that you got me. I, I have did. never had this before, but I'm really intrigued by it. It's from Wolf Creek Brewery. Wolf Creek Brewing. Uh, yep. I, I went to uh, Total Wine today, which um, totally has other stuff too. Totally. And, yeah, and Total Wine. Um, so I, I got Kyle a couple of random IPAs. I'm not. Uh, Kyle trusts me. He's like, he's like, give me an IPA, and I'm like, I don't drink IPAs, so I'll choose ones with pretty labels. <laughs> well, you know, there's so many out there nowadays. I, That's true. Your guess is as good as mine. But you know what I find yeah. interesting and kind of pathetic is that this is 6.5 percent oh. alcohol. It's literally like half of what the beer I drank last that is week. True. It was like 13 percent. So to drink more I, I pretty of it. much drank two of these in the span of an hour last week, which uh, was a, quite the shit show. I it was. Say. It was a shitty show. So I'm, I'm glad to be. Uh, all right. So bring up on this one. I am drinking. Uh, this is actually a beer I've had before. It is ranks up there amongst my my favorites. Fabies. I guess I mean I have lots of favorites, but um, this is La Fin du Monde. It's a good one. Or if you're a speaker of French, it means the final mound. I believe. That is not true. Final mound. That is completely incorrect. Uh, it's a triple golden ale on Lees, nine percent alcohol by volume. This is from Unibrow, mm. which is a brewery in Quebec. 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 Is that how they pronounce it there, too? I don't, I don't know. It's got a nice little popper sound that it does. Fancy champagne-style opening. This is a, this is really good beer, though. I re, Unibrow has several beers that I like. Another one of note that I get from them is Trois Pistoles. Mm, I actually mm. like that one a lot. I just did a not a great pour, but that'll function for now. Yeah, it'll settle all down. Right. Okay. Cheers. We've, we've done enough exposition. Cheers. Thanks to all of you guys for joining us today. Indeed. We're talking about technology. And guess what? Guess what we're starting with today? Um, technology? Technology. No, we're starting with sword fight. Oh, oh you're switching it up a bit. Mm. Wow, you're going against the mainstream here. So I had to dig down through that head to get some actual beer. Now I have... Can, can someone screen cap that and now I have put it in a gift? Face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, sword so fight. we're doing sword fight. That's right. We're just diving right into it today. Yep. All right, cool. So what's, Not messing around. What uh, what shall I beat you at today? In Quebec, they say Quebec, or in Quebec, they say Quebec. Quebec. Yeah, it's like Quebec. Quebec. I don't know. Canada. What are you going to do about Canada? Eh. <laughs> nothing you can do. That's a problem we'll solve on another show. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, so uh, earlier this week, or just a couple days ago. It's Jay. July 6th. Jay po published a video. Um, which I watched and enjoyed, which I do with uh, quite a few of Jay's videos. Um, he he had the new R9390 from AMD. He was looking at M MSI's particular version of that, and he did an R90 versus 970 comparison. Right. Um, very good video. Uh, he found that the the uh, R9390 did a very good job. And um, here I'll, I'll actually hit play, so it's not just Jay. I mean, not that we don't like a freeze frame of Jay, right? But <laughs> Anyway, it's he, like the he, derpiest face frame you can find. Yeah, so further on here, he just rockets through some of these benchmarks, so I'll show the, those to you guys real quick if you're interested. But um, Sword Fight, of course, we like to bring up a subject that's at least mildly controversial, and we like to take either side of it. And Kyle and I will argue um, that for you guys, and then you guys also get to um, argue amongst yourselves yeah. or argue with us. And, um, and, and let us know your feelings on it. So we're talking about rebranding or also known as rebadging. Uh -huh. um, and the disappointment that people had when the, three the 300 series from AMD was first kind of you know, launched and everything was, was like, oh, these are all rebrands or rebadges. Re these are all existing GPUs, so that's what a rebadge is. If you take a GPU that was, say, in the past, and we'll give the example from the current generation, in the past it was a 290X, mm -hmm. and you take that same GPU and you put it on even if it's maybe even the same PCB with the same cooler, or maybe there's like a different sticker on it, and now it's a 390X. Yeah. Um, now the question is, is that are are these cards from Nvidia or from AMD that have just launched rebadges or rebrands, or are they, as Jay described them in his video, refreshes? 
And a refresh might be something where, sure, it might be the same GPU architecture, yeah. um, but they have done things with it either through refinements in the manufacturing process to eke some more performance out of it, to have chips that maybe run a little bit cooler than the first runs that went through there, or chips that are able to achieve higher clock speeds and that sort of thing. Now, according to Jay's video, he said that the 390 to him is more of a refresh than uh -huh. a rebatch. Okay. And so he was giving it a little bit more credit, whereas some people were disappointed that the Hawaii GPU cores were being re reused. Um, he, uh, from the performance he saw, as well as some of just the little under the hood improvements that you, you, you kind of get, um, he, he said, no, this is a refresh and it's it makes it more worth looking at. So is this a semantic game we're playing here or is this something that um, I think the fact that it's a, a topic on sword fight makes it a semantic game. That is true. Mm. And Fractal Josh has joined us. Hello, Fractal Josh. Yo, yo, yo. I have Fractal Josh on my shirt today. What a brosive. He's right there in the middle. There he is. Doing the pie face. Pie fist. Um, all right, so the question is, are AMD's 300 series GPUs <clears throat> rebrands or are they refreshes? Refreshes? Mm. Are they refreshing? Mm. Which side of this argument would you like to take, Kyle? Well, while you guys in chat, go ahead and click on that straw poll. And I give am, us your give us your thoughts. I'm gonna play devil's advocate to Jay, okay, and say that they're rebrands. They're just rebrands, and they suck. Okay, I'm not gonna go that bold, but I will say, for the sake of this argument, I will say that they are rebrands. And um, all right, you want to go first? You want to let me go first? Hmm. Flip a coin. It's taking too long. I'm gonna go first. <laughs> okay. All right, so I'm gonna say these are these are these are these are. Refreshes, Kyle. They are, okay. they are new GPUs. They are not just the same GPUs that they had before. Hmm. I have evidence. I have evidence to prove this. Let us take a gander <laughs> at Wikipedia. See. Yes, let's look at Wikipedia. The crowdsourced. Well, Wikipedia is a good. I mean, the charts on Wikipedia are great. So mm -hmm. if we scroll down here, sure. we might see, for instance, the 390X listed here as well as the 390. But you'll notice they're not the same name. See, they have now called them Granada Pro. What? And Granada XT versus the uh, parenthetical Hawaii Pro and Hawaii XT. The fact that it is now called Granada <laughs> is significantly different. Now it's all in the name. So, it's so all marketing. Here's here's what I'll, here's where I would come at from this argument. If you look at performance, performance is is significantly improved. If you look at pricing, pricing is significantly reduced compared to the last generation when 290 and 290X launched. If you look at overclocking in particular, I would say you will find some significant um, improvements in the manufacturing process that AMD must have realized in order to do this because it's much more common for out of the box 390s and 390Xs to be able to hit uh, 1150 or 1200 megahertz. Whereas I will say when I had my first generation 290Xs, even dropping a water cooling, uh, like the NZXT water cooler Kraken on there, mm -hmm. and with that, I was still only able to overclock by like 7-8%. I was able to get from 1,000 to like 1,070 or 1,080 right. or something like that. So the fact that you can overclock them so much more, I think is a significant improvement. And just looking at some of the other benefits that AMD has come out with since the launch of Hawaii, or if you go all the way back since the launch of GCN in general, because these are all still GCN, that general micro or GPU microarchitecture based chips, they have made significant enough improvements to be able to say this is a new graphics card. It's not just the same as the old graphics card. And I will tell you why you're completely wrong, Paul. You could, you could do that. Um, so I was doing some research on this a uh, couple days, maybe last week myself, and I was reading an article uh, from Anantech. And Anantech was having a really hard time squeezing any information out of AMD about the kinds of modifications or the upgrades, so to speak, that they had implemented onto these rebranded chips. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like, you know, knowing who Anantech is and knowing how tightly integrated they are into the community, I feel like if AMD really truly believed that these were refresh cards, and you're drinking beer off of your mouse pad. I lost a, I lost a drop there. I guess it's better than on our then, laptops, then we'll right? lose a drop. All right, fair enough. <clears throat> I feel like if AMD really knew and felt confident in their GPUs as being refreshes and not rebrands, they would have came forth with that kind of information, and they would have advertised it a bit more. I felt like they were just kind of covering up how little they had done uh, on a hardware level. Now, that's not to say that these cards haven't been optimized very well. Uh, over the predecessor, basically the same chip, mm -hmm. uh, but from the two, 290, uh, the, the 200 series, essentially. But I think a lot of it has to do with drivers as well. 
and I think that um, they've come a long way with with the the software support than they than they had with the 200 series. But that doesn't necessarily make it a refresh. Uh, these are just kind of optimizations on a software level that um, can, you can still see the gains that you were talking about. You can still see better overclocking performance and uh, and and things like you know lower thermals even because if you can increase the efficiency through software through drivers then that obviously equates to less heat less less uh, heat output and things like that. So mm. I'm going to I'm going to have to disagree and say that you're just wrong based on fact. Well, I that mean is the end all my decision. I will I'll be honest here that my oh wait I should mute this. Um, I'll be honest that my really my original away. goal for for the sword fight segment was for the entire thing to devolve into us just hurling ins insults back and forth <laughs> to each other. Yeah, I'm you're surprised. Stupid. I'm surprised at the re remarkable amount of, uh, of valid arguments, valid that argumentation that, that we've made. Of course, <laughs> we're smarter over than over we think weeks. we are. This is our twentieth. Did we say this is our twentieth episode too? Oh no, this we is didn't. Twentieth episode. That's pretty amazing. Two zero. Twenty weeks straight. So consistent. Yeah. Whew. Well, you have not not me. I well, was, I, mean, I was gone. The show as an entity. The show has been going on. So. Indeed. All right, guys. Let's see what you think about this particular question. Mm -hmm. uh, AMD's three hundred series rebrands refreshes. Let's look at results. And refreshes. Wait, oh, wow! Nothing but a bunch of AMD fanboys in the chat today. <laughs> <laughs> Going for it. Um, Sixty votes. Yeah. So a lot. Of, I, I will. I, I'm. I've been happy with the reception of these cards because there was a lot of negativity. I think towards the early earlier on, but I think people are really kind of pulling for AMD. People want AMD to do well. There's yeah. a little bit more talk about AMD we're going to do on your side of the show, of course. Right. Um, but yeah, uh, the the one argument I think that you might have brought up that, that I would have if I was arguing your side, though, is that you can take a 290X and you can flash the vBIOS exactly. and have it recognized as a 390X. That would be my, like, well, then what's the difference? Yeah. But then, of course, you might not be able to overclock as much, or your 290X might suddenly be artifacting and I believe like Hard OCP did something like that recently they with did. the... 200 Look at that. Vote's still yes. coming in. So we have lots of people. Uh, all right. So, Boom. guys, I'm glad people are, are excited about the new AMD series. Even even the, granted, they're using older hardware for the 300 series, but they've they've kept the pricing really competitive, and I think that's been yes, they have. a very important thing. All right. We always do two questions uh, when it comes to sword fights. So our second question. One sword fight if, is not enough. If I can get it at least copied here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Reddit here, because I wanted to get some of your guys' feedback about Reddit. Um, we're just... Mm. We're keeping we're keeping this one really basic. We're keeping it really, really straightforward. Sweet. Reddit, are we is good? We thumbs up or thumbs down? Ooh, Reddit, upvote or downvote? We are going to decide this. Yes, we're, we're <laughs> going to decide this right now, since we have upvote? such intimate okay. knowledge of this situation, yes, and we are so completely. How often do you use Reddit? We're so educated on this topic. Uh, hardly ever. Hardly ever. Yeah. Okay. I will say I probably go on there maybe once a week at most. Maybe once okay. every two weeks. Yeah, and maybe, it's just for a few I hours. go on maybe once or twice. I've I haven't contributed all that much. Um, I did some contributions in the really really light in in the uh, mechanical keyboard subreddit when I was doing my mechanical keyboard video because I actually worked with the dude who made the the, the like how to that he put on there and I used right. a lot of his tips so I wanted to get his okay before I went forward with that. I, I actually browse so, the uh, the electronic cigarette subreddit probably oh. more than the tech stuff. Well. That's technology stuff. Like, I ask them questions because there's a, I already to know some, where to go to for information degree. on tech. But right. for e-cigs, usually. All right, so Reddit, anyway. the Reddit the Reddit meltdown. Um, you're going to talk about Reddit a little bit on your side of the show, too, right? Just briefly, yeah. A little bit. All right, yeah, so. Yeah, you can go into it. Well, I don't, want, I don't want to dwell too much on what actually happens because it's been all over the interwebs. Are there any other pictures in this story? Nope, no pictures. Mm. I'm going to stick with the picture at the top, then. Okay. Look at all those angry... Angry Reddit robots. Um, aliens. No, aliens, I'm sorry. <laughs> See? <laughs> obviously, yeah. obviously, I'm qualified to do this. All right, so um, Reddit had a... Uh, Reddit CEO Ellen Pau has been under fire uh, because they fired their director of talent, Victoria Taylor. Victoria has posted on various places... Er, Vi Victoria has had kind of let it go out that she obviously wasn't happy with being fired and that the way they went about it wasn't exactly appropriate. Ellen has now come, come well she's apologized a bit. Um, she's also come back and said a few things that, that I thought were, I mean at least she's, she's not, she's not like a terrible person in my mind. 
Like, we don't as know. far as what she's been doing. She seems reasonable. Yeah. I will say that. that. And she has been going on Reddit and trying to talk to people. I saw a comment in here that said, like, her, 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 her posts kept getting downvoted. <laughs> so no one was seeing any of them. So that doesn't make it difficult to actually communicate on that platform. Um, but the general idea is that Reddit has a big sep- a, there's a there's a large separation between the people who actually run reddit which would be the volunteers the moderators and the actual people in charge who are the people you know running the business and that kind of thing right there's also a concern that there's a push on the business side to go more towards commoditization of the sites and to sell more things and you know they were talking about possible changes to the amas and that that kind of thing right and um there's obviously going to be a pushback against that because people are more into i think crowdsource stuff and anytime you're like oh we need to monetize this we need to i think the word in 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 the business world that i hear used a lot that i hate is exploit we need to exploit this it's like the like worst kind of get as much money out of it as, marketing as we possibly can or can something use. like that so there's a big revolt amongst the mods uh over the past weekend in the past week they they just turned off a bunch of the forums because they can do that mm. which is yeah. The reason why Reddit's cool in some extent is because the mods actually have a fair amount of authority. Right. So they shut off like 300 of the well-known forums and that kind of thing. And there's just been awkward kinds of back and forth about what they should do with it. But that's all besides the point. Those are just the details we want to tell you right now because we're going to argue this and we're going to determine uh, Reddit, good or bad. Which side are you, what are you, which side are you going to take? Mmm. 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 We should make this quick too. I'm already going long. Huh? I'm, well, I, I picked the last one so you pick this one you pick the last one yeah all right i'm gonna say uh reddit is 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 good so i'll, uh, I'll say good and i went first last uh, time so you can go first this time so okay. kyle's gonna argue that reddit is done for completely over with and okay. i will i will argue in favor of uh, keeping reddit around for a little bit all right so. so the reason why reddit is done for and why it's no good is well this is a shining ex- example Obviously. i mean it's already the story just it makes the argument for me. Um, what you have is... <laughs> everything I've just said. The, everything, you've just argued my side, Paul. Thank you <laughs> for making this a very easy sword fight. Um, what you have here is a website that's built on a fundamental system of volunteers. Okay. And that's what makes it so great. But at the same time, as we can see from this article and this whole controversy, it's also the same thing that can bring it to a screeching halt. It can. Because give power to the people. These are not employees that you can fire and and hire rehire to someone else or hire someone else to, to fill their shoes, mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden work keeps flowing smoothly. No, if if these people are volunteering free of charge, then they have the right to control the site in ways where the actual staff members of Reddit have no authority. Um, that's why it seems like. Reddit is so, like, at least the employees of Reddit, the actual paid employees, are so helpless at this point because mm. they've given power to these moderators that are just basically just like the moderators in our Twitch chat. And if you piss them off, the whole site, the whole Every, structure, everything falls comes apart. crumbling down. It does. And you can't rely on a website that's built in that way. Uh, there needs to be some, some more formal structure. And yes, when it works, it works great. And it's good for everyone. Um, but something like this where, you know, the problem is, is you're trying to mesh the professional world with the lives of personal people. Mm-hmm. It's like if, if Newegg hired a bunch of, like, people off the street that were at Walmart. Or, like, they went to Home Depot or something and, like, picked up a bunch of people. I don't know why I use Home Depot. There's no reason. Um, and they just brought them and then, like, they were like, yeah, you're just going to work. No, Walmart's Paid not Walmart. fine. No, I love Walmart. Great deals. Great deals, beautiful people. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was more a dig against the Walmart the, employees. The, <laughs> it's, back to the wow. topic here. The two, right. the, the two of those groups just don't understand each other. They don't speak the same language. Um, there are many like politics in the corporate world that I'm sure okay. the, the staff members of Reddit have that the moderators of Reddit, volunteers, have want nothing to do with, and they don't understand that. Um, so that's why you have a broken system at the end of the day. If something goes south, there's no real good way to fix it. This, this is a new thing. That's why there hasn't been a Reddit before this. Uh, maybe something similar, but there, you know, it's, it's, it hasn't been this successful, and there's probably a good reason why. I always attributed the lack of a Reddit before this to lack of internet. <laughs> The lack of but, internet. But, you know. Either way, okay. <laughs> Executed I'm going in this to, way. I, and I'm going to do my best to have an unprecedented first in, in sword fight here. 
and my answer will be wordless. My response will be wordless. It's just a fart. Uh, I probably am going to say some words, <laughs> but look at this. Look at that puppy. Hey, you... That's cheating. You can't use a cute animal as your sword fight response. The, the puppy doesn't understand hiccups. No. <laughs> Is it hiccuping? It's hiccuping. It, it doesn't understand. Oh, okay. no. Let's, uh, what else What else we got here? Is this is this your argument so, to just to, ring, a, to bring up like all the uh, there's like a, there's a missing Yorkie? Did you go to the awe subreddit? <laughs> yes, you bastard! <laughs> I've used I'm this is dirty tactics right here. This is oh, uncalled look for. Look at that! Look, that's a Trump card. You can't play a Trump <laughs> card. Is, I know. That's bullshit. I know this. I know, oh, your son of a bitch! How cute that is. Well, yeah. Guys, let, let me let me go to the guys. You <laughs> you really want to get rid of Reddit? I'll go to another the, subreddit that's, that'll scare the Reddit. hell out of you. <laughs> Look at that cat. Damn you! <laughs> Duh! The cat's ruining my day! <laughs> He's but, just... What is the cat doing? He's just stepping all over... He's trying to drink the All water. my arguments. <laughs> the water is... This is, well, this is stupid. That's, all right. I'm gonna go to the. Well, I'm gonna go to the. Let's see how compelling. What about the dicks subreddit? Let's see yeah. how compelling my argument was. Is there a dick after... subreddit? There's got to be a dick subreddit. There, I'm sure. I'm sure there is a subreddit. R. Johnson. I mean, that would be that would be the <laughs> other argument that that I would have gone in, into is that subreddits for specific like really really niche topics. Yeah. Are like just bounties of information for like something that you've never would have had like a website dedicated to or something like that so that that, that is something a lot of people use yeah. it for all right but let's see results space dick all right well hey i will say it's closer than i it's fairly close but people people do still want to keep reddit around someone said don't go to space dick Space stick. There's, Reddit, a, space, Reddit, there's space, a Reddit space stick. Subreddit stick, space stick. Space stick subreddit. I'm curious. Right, now. We are not at all recommending or endorsing the I'm, space I'm, stick subreddit. I'm including that as part of my argument. But Kyle's going to put it in the video <laughs> description. <laughs> the yes. Space stick subreddit for what's not safe Reddit for work. Shouldn't be around anymore. That's right. All right. I, I think I think when it comes to the general idea here yeah. is that people don't want to see too much effort put into like making money with the site. It doesn't seem like what the site's right. been about as much. Yeah. It's more been about like the free spread of information. And people can go right. post whatever they want. And the community has always been, or I mean, a lot of the times, is something where like you read Reddit comments and you'll see people post these like actual thoughtful responses that are, like yeah. clearly have some knowledge about the subject matter and stuff like that. And that's the time when the times when I'm like, wow, like a little subtopic or whatever. But yeah. then you start reading through th some comments and you find more little tidbits and that kind of thing. And that's right. that's what I always enjoy. Yeah. Anyway. All Indeed. right, that's all for Sword Fight. Let's move on to our next segment. Okay, what, what do we what, got? What the hell is the next segment? Coming up. Know. Tales oh, from Space. Tales from, from space. Space, space. I got a new shirt order. Space. You got a new shirt? Oh, Kyle. Yes, sure. thank you whoever bought that. Actually, there we go. that was my future father-in-law. <laughs> that's my future father-in-law just was. bought a shirt. He bought a CPU cooler shirt. I wonder if he's watching the show right now. 42 minutes ago. I love you. you. you Rodney, you, if you're watching, your, I love you. Do your future parents-in-law watch the show? Uh, Is my, that something we should be concerned my about? My future father-in-law watches. Okay. And so does uh, my future brother-in-law. Hmm. Well, welcome to the show. Yes. If you guys are watching right there. Rel oh, yeah. Relatives of Heather. <laughs> oh, yes. He's, silver, silver chains. He's, he's, that's, that's my um, brother, basically. He's commenting in chat right now. He's laughing his ass off. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, Tales all right. from Space. All right, what do we got? Now, this is sometimes talesfromspace.com when all of the space stories I can find that seem interesting are from space.com. So when they're not, you but just chop not. off this the dot com. This is just Tales from Space. All right. Uh, our first article is from Ars Technica. All right, what do we got? And uh, we're going we're gonna to discuss this really quickly. Is it depressing? So um, do you know about web? The you interweb? Probably, you probably don't know about web. Mm. Um, no, no. Uh, well, I need to refer to my notes here so I don't screw anything up. Okay. Right, so the James Webb Space Telescope, or JWST, All right. which was previously known as the Next Generation Space Telescope, yep. or NGST, which is remarkably similar to NGFF, like Next Generation Form Factor. Yeah. That's unrelated, though. Totally. All right, so totally this with is you a right space now. observatory. It's under construction, and it's scheduled to launch in October of 2018. Right. Okay. That's the that's the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, 
It has a five to ten year lifespan, and it promises to be much, much better than its uh, predecessors, such as Hubble and the other one that's not called Hubble that's not as well known. They they have that short of a lifespan. Um, yeah, I mean, as far as usable lifespan. Oh, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, Hubble's been up there for a while. Yeah. I don't know when Hubble first launched, but um, interesting. Here, here, here's a look, for example, at the actual array of uh, of star catching. Um, mirrors that are going to be on that. But um, this, actually, this article is not about the JWST. Uh, it's about what's after the James okay. Webb Space Telescope. It's going to be something um, that is known as the HDST, or High Definition Space Telescope. Yeah. Right? And that might seem, I don't know, they should at least go for like 4K or something, wouldn't you say? Rather than HD? Okay, that's a <laughs> terrible joke. Uh, HD, HDST, High Definition Space Telescope. Now, this this telescope we're talking about right now, it's not going to be launched until the late 2030s, okay. at least. So, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably be at least 25 by then. Um, <laughs> the cool, The cool... What? Nothing? No, I'm just talking... Um, I'll be old. Space and time. I'll be really old. Yes. Um, the coolest thing about it is is that the, the mirror array on it is just massive, um, which I was showing just a moment here. So, uh, you can see in this little thing, the Hubble mirror array on the left, which is 2.4 meters. The JWST, which isn't even launched yet, is going to be 6.5 meters. You can see the array of hexagonal mirrors there. The HDST will have a 12 meter array. Wow. That's a, it's pretty big. And, you know, just like a, having a larger, say, sensor on a camera or something like that, you know, it's going to be able to pick up more detail and that sort of thing. Wow. All right. Now, calculations done by the team working on this suggest that the uh, HDST would have 100 parsec spatial resolution or better. What does that mean? That means they could do the Kessel run in under 12 parsecs. Or 100 parsec spatial resolution or better for any observable object in the entire universe. In the entire freaking universe. Um, that That is a... I don't know what that means. I'm just being straight up. <laughs> I was going to ask you. I don't... Okay, well here, they give, a, they give a more reasonable comparison there. That's roughly the size of typical star-forming regions in individual galaxies, according to Dal Canton. That's one of the people quoted in the article. Unleashed on the earliest objects in the universe, that sort of resolution could completely revolutionize our understanding of how galaxies were assembled, and do so in just a few hours, as opposed to the weeks that it takes Hubble. Okay. So Hubble does like lo long, longer exposures, basically, to try to pull in more light. Yeah. But then there's also this other thing that has to do, like it has to block out the other starlight coming in so it can focus on something. So this is also going to have some more technology to be able to do that. Um, and the cost of this particular uh, telescope or, or uh, array of, they had a better name for it, observatory, space observatory, uh -huh. um, is $8 billion, which honestly I think sounds like a deal. That's, that's not even that much. Eight. Billion? Eight billion, yeah. I mean, when you're talking about space exploration, that doesn't seem like that expensive. Or Intel. So, oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I had a thing going on with this segment that I didn't do. So my, I'm going to ask you guys a question at the beginning of each little, little topic here, and you guys can post some answers, and maybe I'll read them in the chat. The question is, what would you point this space telescope at if you had this, not, not, the, not the web one, the, I the, can't, the new one. I can't what say my at? first initial thought out loud. <laughs> you'd point it at your, at your Johnson. <laughs> no. you'd, you'd go for some GFAP uh, action, point it uh, at Johnson. I would and, point it at the sun. That's, and that's and sun? stare okay. at it. No, I would probably look uh, at the moon. The moon? Or, you know, like... Uh, we already know a lot about the Jupiter, moon. About far off Jupiter stuff. and, and uh, Venus have been pretty visible lately. Jupiter and Venus, okay. Yeah, you kind of see them like summer, side by side. Actually, the, another article that I didn't bring up for this was that there's... If you guys are... I don't I do not do this at all, but I mean, if you like star watching and that sort of thing, there's a lot of the planets that are, that are visible right now. Yeah. Um, the correct answer... Um, no, the, what they're actually going to be using it for is to find um, habitable planets. Um, they're, they're doing a lot of like searching for terrestrial... Or what are the classification? There's a classification in Star in Star Trek. They have M3. Is that it? Maybe. I, I'm totally probably I'm not wrong a Trekkie. With that. Yeah. Hopefully somebody will will uh, correct me in the chat. All right, but um, that's cool. New stuff. New telescope. Let's move on. Um, next up on Tales from Space, uh, people were talking already in chat about Pluto. Poor Pluto. Oh. All right. My question for you guys as I as we dig into this article. This is on Engadget. Um, NASA is getting a lot of more close-up pictures of uh, Pluto, and that is because of the New Horizons uh, 
uh, explorer, whatever satellite. Josh satellite is thing. leaving. Bye, uh, Josh. Josh is leaving. Oh, bye, Josh. Thanks for stopping by, man. Excuse me, though. Um, all right, so New Horizons um, actually had a glitch that cut off its data the feed. Um, news, New Horizons is, is heading out towards Pluto right now. Uh, had a glitch, it cut off its data feed, and then it kicked into a safety mode, which means it stops gathering scientific data. Okay. So there was a scare for a while that it was going to be like, people were going to be disappointed. Destroyed. But it recovered from it somehow, which is really cool. There have been a couple of these stories recently. The, How Philly, long? the Philly Lander, for example, that we talked about, um, also was like something they thought was gone, and then it came back. Um, is this but, planning on just flying by Pluto? It's this like is a, so this, flu, this Pluto flyby, this Pluto <laughs> flyby, this Pluto flyby is going to happen next week. Um, when is it? <laughs> Beef's Eddie card. What? <laughs> what? Just uh, you reminded me of this is, when I called Ed from Sapphire. Uh, Beef. Oh yeah, Beef. Uh, July fourteenth, actually a week from today. It's gonna. We can talk about pass this thing. Pluto. Yeah, it's gonna be passing. Uh, Pluto and getting much okay. closer and higher resolution images than we've seen before. So this Engadget article says NASA's latest Pluto, Pluto images actually show a planet, right? Because there's people who still want it to be a planet. Yeah. Do you think Pluto is a planet? That's my I, question for you I guys. don't know and I don't care. Do you think it is? You don't care whether Pluto is classified as a planet or what, not? What does it matter? It's nostalgia. I think it's just nostalgia. It's people who Maybe. people who grew up like we have nine planets. This is our solar system. Yeah. Learn all of the nine planets, and like, you know, that's what you learned. Like it's in Schoolhouse Rock. Up. Remember Schoolhouse Rock? And then Rock? suddenly they're like, Pluto is not a planet. It's an extra space organism or whatever the hell. It's like when we found out that it. tomatoes weren't fruit yeah. or vegetables. That yeah, they were exactly. It like, blows what? your mind. And you're like, no, I don't want to live on this planet anymore. Yeah. It's it's wrong. <laughs> um, it's like having a religion. And we a lot of people in chat seem to agree. Pluto's a planet. That Pluto should be. A it's planet. you know why? It's because they're all '90s kids. <laughs> yeah, they're all '90s. That's kids. why they think it's a planet. That's that's it. Um, I do too. I'm a '90s kid. But, but all right. So the, I mean, they have some some closer up images of it. The current images that you're seeing right here on the screen have been taken from about 7.8 million to 9.2 million miles away from Pluto. Meh. Um, and there's some stuff that they're looking at at it. Like, look, right? There's a dark band around the center that they have no explanation it's for. It's got like a big wart. There's giant spots. But there's a continuous swath of dark ground near the equator. What types of aliens are living there? That's probably that's probably dirt Dirt mongers. Anyway. That's what they're called. All right, so uh, that's the new Horizons Pluto flyby. So we'll, we'll, we'll be expecting... Pluto flyby. We'll be expecting some better pictures of Pluto coming very, very soon. All right. Pluto one more Pipeline. one more story here to talk about in Tales from Space. Tales from Space. And that is uh, microbes preparing Mars for humans, right? I've gotten I've gotten kind of a bit of a fascination with the idea of terraforming Mars lately. Really? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not not like an infatuation or anything is like that. Is that why you asked me earlier if I had seen the trailer to The Martian? Uh, it was. Uh, also, was that was going to be the thing I was going to show people to make this mildly more interesting with some, <laughs> with some like HD Hollywood here. Some I'll cinematography just, I'm just shit. Show you guys that right now. Look at the cinematic get, shit. Here, watch the Martian trailer. It's it's absolutely fantastic. This is all real. This is a documentary. This all happened. Now it's based on a book. This book is fascinating. Uh, we've been listening to the audio book. We're only a few chapters in, um, but this I'm really looking forward to this movie because it just looks like a good movie. It's got Harrison um, Ford in it's it. It's got Matt Damon and it Har be? Harrison Ford in it too. And that's a uh, childish Gambino. Oh really? Oh, and it, is that Kristen Wiig? Of course it is. It is. Yeah. Right. Wow. I think so. Such an interesting role for her because she's you know, Kristen Wiig. Set like wacky Saturday Night Live. I always think she's wearing a wig because her name's <laughs> Kristen Wiig, but that, that's okay. Kristen Wiig. Terrible. Anyway. Terrible. Uh, Fascinating movie hell coming, you go. coming up that I'm I'm kind of looking forward to, but I should probably stop this before we get. That's a good. Uh, that's got right IMAX material written all, all right, over. All right, so the, the, this article, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run through all these little points for, from it really quick, is about uh, preparing Mars for human colonization. Because in my personal opinion, the idea of colonizing Mars as a secondary, like we need something other than Earth to, to like rely on as a fallback platform yeah. or something. Right. And um, the idea of finding an extra Earth planet that's habitable. Um, that's we could actually travel to in any reasonable sense and get there within like any amount of human lifetime lifespans or that kind of thing is real. I mean, just the the unless we somehow find a way to 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 create wormholes wormhole, or something, it's it's a pretty it's pretty out there as far as feasibility. However, terraforming Mars is something that's a little bit more possible. So what right. they're talking about doing is using microbes to prepare Mars for humans. 
What are microbes? So, microbes are they're cy cyanobacteria. They're very, very small organisms. Oh, microbiology. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So biological living organisms that do things like, you know, you have like microbes in your poo and stuff like that to yeah. break it down and that kind of thing. So right. these organisms would produce oxygen via reactions with compounds in the soil of Mars and store the gas inside biodomes on the planet's surface. So they'd be sealed in these in little containers. And they, I don't know how to do I just imagine like a test tube and it goes dunk, whatever. And it releases or <laughs> on whatever. On Mars surface. No, it doesn't release. And then inside the test tube, which is like its own little like contained environment, okay. so you don't have to deal with like, you know, not having oxygen or whatever. The microbes work on the soil and create oxygen. And then that oxygen could then be harvested. So the reason this is like positive and good is that it might potentially, um, well, I mean, on a large scale, it could potentially lead to, to a, a way to terraform Mars, and you know they've they've had they've discussed various ways that you could change the actual chemistry and makeup of the Martian uh, uh, atmosphere, which is, I mean, kind of minimal, and yeah. um, make it a more Earth-like situation. Um, so, are they saying this solution would would allow us to, to terraform Mars without having with having a biodome or without needing one? No, these this is more of like how they could how they could make a more feasible mission to Mars. Okay. Because they wouldn't okay. need to haul the oxygen there. Right, right. Um, creating oxygen on Mars... Before you even get there. Yeah, is a major issue. It's something... Um, <clears throat> well, creating food, I think, is at least as far as where I've gotten with the Martian is an important thing, but... Yeah. Creating oxygen is very important. So this would allow it to create create oxygen on the planet rather than having to use the fuel to bring the oxygen there right. and have enough to come back and all that kind of stuff. So I thought it was kind of cool. And, um, do you think? Do you think? I mean, how long do you think it'll be until one day we're like, "Oh, we, what are you doing for Christmas? Oh, we're gonna visit, visit the relatives on Mars. We'll be back to would in you, the year." Would you, would you move to Mars? Let's say, let's mm. say within the next ten or fifteen years, like we are sending, like you know, a colony of you know several hundred people or something like that to Mars. I mean, there's already people who have signed up for this, although I think that might, might have been a hoax. Might have been a hoax. <laughs> Possibly, um, we haven't heard much of it. But, but yeah, yeah would, you, would, would you would you consider I do that? No, I wouldn't. No. I wouldn't cons I would consider visiting, but I would yeah. never live there. At least not in the, in the next ten, fifteen years. If you had years. some reasonably safe method of getting there and back, I would just get bored. That would be important. Yeah. I mean, how's the inter how's the internet speeds on Mars? You're right. Right. Can you I Facebook? I mean, not Facebook. If you, Can I YouTube? If you could Can be I tweet? On Mars, but you still had a nice internet connection with a, like a low enough ping. They could actually like game or something. Yeah, I I don't know if I could do it that without well, ever being able to game again. Work out. They need they need the subspace. That's right. They need subspace communication. And like, how's that. the pho on Mars? Am I gonna have? I'm just not gonna have any good pho. It depends on the colonists going there. I need my noodle soup on. I need to get the right ingredients. So. All right. All right. 100 Vietnamese men. Enough of the tales from space. Tales from space. Tales from space. I'm gonna I'm gonna make an intro space, space, audio space, bit space, for that space, at some point. All right. Space, 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 space. Next up, we're moving on to conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. and um, we're supposed to have what? What are we supposed to have at the beginning of conspiracy theories? Conspiracy like theory. The, oh, <laughs> that's that's it's the intro song. I heard some people saying that I just made up right now. So I brought conspiracy theories back because we did we did it last week, and there was a lot of positive feedback on it. So I brought it back. The other reason we're doing conspiracy theories this week is because I visited the tech syndicate forums, and there's always conspiracies there. And so this is the Conspiracy Theories Tech Syndicate Forums edition. It's very conspiracy. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with Tech Syndicate Forums, techsyndicate.com is Logan's website uh, that he works on with uh, Wendell and, and all that group of guys. Uh, who, who And, and guy, girl. Well, men, yes, men and women who work on that. <laughs> um, Boys and girls. Got to point that out very specifically. Um, <laughs> all and, and yeah, it's, it's a great place to have a good community there. <clears throat> but they, they, they can go off on the con conspiracy theory uh, trail from time to time. So let's okay. just let's dive right into it. Let's start off with uh, net neutrality, right? And um, sure. All right. So net neutrality, I think we by and large would all agree is a good thing. Yes. We want net neutrality. And um, most of us, at least according to polls and everything, most people, when the FCC actually made the net neutrality decision, was that earlier this year? Yes. Um, people were happy about it and people thought it was a good thing. Yeah. Except the large corporations and ISPs, of course. Yeah, of um, course. Now, since since the U.S. Um, government is crappy sometimes, uh, House Republicans have snuck snuck a net neutrality attack into an appropriations bill. There's huh. there's no other interesting pictures to show here except for <laughs> that picture of Tom Wheeler. 
switch back to us. Um, <laughs> we are more interesting than him. So this is a conspiracy to kill net neutrality, basically. Uh, there's a provision that's hidden in a spending bill uh, that would block the, the you're clicking all over my article, block the Federal <laughs> Communications Commission from implementing its net neutrality rules until courts weigh in on the issue. So right now mm. the FCC is trying to implement some of these rules. Right. They've actually taken some legal action against some of these ISPs and people who are doing shady things like throttling data or people who are treat or, or the ISPs that are treating certain data as more giving it better priority than others, which they're not supposed to do. Data is supposed to be neutral. Right. All data is supposed to be the same. If yeah. you access this site or this site, it should all come in the same direction. And your ISP should not have a say in what gets better treatment or what does not get better treatment. That's True. kind of the basis of net neutrality. Now. When it comes to legislators, the idea that we might assume that they have here is that by delaying this and pushing it back by including this provision in this spending bill, that it would, you know, public interest would kind of die off and then they could come back and do whatever shady dealings that right. they wanted that would be much more in the interest of the ISPs right. than in the general public. And people would notice because <clears throat> people have short attention spans and be like, squirrel. Yeah. It's like when you get a speeding ticket and you keep postponing the date when you're supposed to show up to yeah. court in hopes that the cop will just lose maybe, interest and not show up. Maybe they'll forget maybe they'll about forget. that ticket and stop sending me the, the ticket letters. Yeah. And then it'll just go away. It always it works could, every it time. Could just happen. That's, totally that's, foolproof. That's, do you have warrants out, don't you? <laughs> Probably. We're not, okay. not at liberty to talk about that. So the public overwhelmingly supports net neutrality, um, and that includes conservative Republicans, who I'm not trying to demonize by, with this story, since the story says House Republicans are sneaking this net neutrality attack. Everyone seems to like net neutrality, including conservative Republicans, 83% of whom support the concepts behind net neutrality. Um, the groups who are at fault, at least the people who, who, who are being stupid in this, the ones who immediately sued the FCC when they did the new FC, when they did the new broadband rules were Al Alamo Broadband, CenturyLink, and the trade group U.S. Telecom, which is, I believe, fairly massive. Um, so the only reason I bring this up as a conspiracy theory is because they're trying to sneak it into it. I hate that. Yeah. When they try to do, like, you hear about this stupid thing in, like, like bills all the time. They're like, hey, this bill to, like, help starving children from dying of being molested or something. And like, oh, also of course I'll support that. And also we're going to start... Burn your firstborn child. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> what? <laughs> something like what that. Where did that Just down in the footer or something. Yeah. Where you like piggyback stuff on or something. Like, I hate that crap. So yeah. it's very don't deceiving. let them do it. Everyone stay vigilant about this kind of thing. Indeed. Um, keep keep sending letters to your Congress critters if you want. I like that <laughs> word, Congress critters. I know that's a ripoff from Tech Syndicate, but I critters. do that sometime. Um, and yeah, let them know that we're not going to stand for this kind of crap. We're okay. not gonna take it. Here, I have a question. Yes. How many of you guys are using Google Chrome to watch this show right now? You are? Actually, I am too. Well, we're using. I didn't think that. Both of us. Use this question. Well, do you know that your Google Chrome is probably listening to you right now? <gasps> so does that mean like we have one more viewer on Twitch? Is, yes. Can we, can we count that as a person? <laughs> yes, that's right. Google. Google. Google Damn it! It's already Gear, happening. Google Chrome. Google Chrome. Oh my <laughs> uh, In 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 one of the June updates, has integrated an audio listener into the software. Mm. Yes, that's right. So to without without consent, according to these articles, mm. which are very up in arms about it, Surprises Google's no code has downloaded a black box of code that, according to itself, has turned on the microphone and was actively listening to you. Hmm. Now. No. Now I don't want to go. I don't want to go off the rails or anything here. But is there? And here's the original article. Article here from WeAreChange.org. But is there anything that you've done, say, in the past week that you wouldn't have want Google Chrome listening to? No. Nothing at all. In that case, we are not concerned at all about this. This occurrence. This does not affect me at all. Google conspiring, conspiring to listen to because everything I you have do. No um, secrets. Nothing. Nothing at all. Not one, not one <laughs> bit. So, D is there any um, speculation on why they're listening in? Yes. Is it there's just a for very, data? Is it for very, data and advertising? It's a very reasonable explanation. Okay. But giving reasonable explanations is not the point of 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 the conspiracy I know. theory segment. Of I this. know. I'll come to the reasonable explanation in a minute. But all right, so let's talk about um, open source, right? So Google Chrome has Chromium, which is the open source version of Chrome. Uh, Open source 
typically goes through a vetting process where lots of programmers will go through and look at the code and sort of validate the code and they'll test it and whatever before it's compiled to binary where the systems can actually run. Yeah. Um, the reason people are pissed off about this particular update is because Chromium kind of abused its position, so to speak, as a trusted upstream to insert lines of source code that bypassed the audit then build process that is uh, typical of open source projects okay. like this. Okay. Now, the reasonable explanation that you were just alluding to is, OK, Google. Mm. OK, Google. Yeah. OK, Google. The voice recognition is like the Siri equivalent. I don't think it's actually listening to us right now. OK, no. Google. I don't think it's listening. It's right. just hiding. So if you guys have Android phones, of course, and you use uh, Google Now, you can say, OK, Google, and then you can like ask it a question or whatever. Google is a difficult word to say when you've had a few drinks. Google. Google. It's the double G. Google. Anyway, so Google. Um, my question would be, all right, so if you want to have voice commands, then you're going to need to have devices listen to you. Yeah. So it becomes a matter of trust. They went over this with Xbox, Xbox One as well. But only when you tell them to listen to you. Only when you tell them to listen to you, or only, only when you know that it's listening to you. Yeah. you. So that's why this was uh, a bit of a concern for people, was because it seemed surreptitious. It seemed like it was inserted there without people knowing, and it seemed Definitely like they didn't want shady. people to know about it. That or... It's just conspiracy theories, and we try to make it seem like people are being shady. <laughs> so, um, I don't know. I like. I'm. I I so appreciate all of the free services Google offers, even though I know they're making their money back on that by like doing data yeah. harvesting and stuff like that. Um, but I want Google to remain like a not evil company, and according to what there's supposedly their unofficial mo mantra or whatever, don't be evil. Uh, and I hope stuff like this isn't actually them harvesting data without people knowing it. Like, right. if I punch in a search into Google, you know, into Google, like I know they're like recording that and you know using it for informational purposes and that sort of thing. But I don't want it to like randomly be picking up a phone call that I have or that's, something. That's like why that, it doesn't you know? make sense that they'd be recording our voices right now. Yeah. Uh, just for the OK but, Google search because but, but, we're but, not searching for anything. The, but the point of this article is. It has the ability to do that. Oh yeah. So everything that that it says, and and the article has a, a pretty good kind of breakdown of it. Actually, the We Are Change article had, had a pretty good uh, breakdown of this. If it will open, of course. Um, which is the paraphrase. Yes, we're downloading and installing a wiretapping black box to your computer, but we're not actually activating it. We did take advantage of our position as a trusted upstream to stealth insert code into open source software that installed this black box onto millions of computers, but we would never abuse the same trust in the same way to insert code that activates the eavesdropping black box we already downloaded and installed onto your computer without your consent or knowledge. These are the people from Chromium? No, this is a... Um, it's a parody? This is a... It's like a This is a kind of a hyped up paraphrase of the guy who wrote the article on... Uh, Satirical interpretation? And on privacy, uh, private internet access, okay. which, which I use. Because, um, I mean, internet privacy, that's, that's a big concern of it. Mm -hmm. um, yes, Chromium is bypassing the entire source code auditing process by downloading a pre-built black box onto people's computers. That's not something we care about. We're concerned with building Google Chrome, the product from Google. As a part of that, we provide the source code for others to package if they like. So, I, I mean, it's just, it's like, how much do you trust Google? And how many stories will it take for you to be like, you know what, Google has taken this too far? And... Right now, I mean, there's stuff that comes up, but there's nothing that's been egregious to my mind, like like crazy bad. Yeah. Um, but like, I hope that doesn't happen. I hope we don't come to the point where like, oh my god, they 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 used their access here to yeah. do this terrible thing here. Right. Because um, that would make me lose a lot of trust in them, and you know, that would make me start to second guess so, using some of their services that I regularly use. Right. So, what should we do in the meantime if we don't want to be listened to by Chromium and Chrome? Do we just basically unplug our mics or disable our mics? Um, Can yeah, we just, I mean, if like, you don't if have a microphone connected, then they can't listen to you. Right. That's. I mean, that's the most. Which is just an inconvenience. That's the most obviously, surefire but... way of going about it. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. Hopefully, right. hopefully, nothing bad comes of it. We have one more story here, and this one I'm going to only touch on briefly because it's so it's so conspiracy theory that the article that it's linked to isn't even there anymore. What? Yes. Hold on a second. It just came and went? <coughs> Pardon me. 
Sorry, I turned myself down. I hope I didn't. I hope I didn't blow out anyone's microphones there. Your headphones. All right. Uh, the FBI is behind the mysterious surveillance aircraft that is all over U.S. cities. Oh, this is sounds pretty conspiracy-ish. Right? Now here's what, here's why this is so conspiracy This is this is by Sir Puffin stuff on the tech syndicate forums. Sounds like a the whole, credible source. The whole article is posted here, and then down at the bottom he has the source. And guess what happens when you try to open the it's source? It's gone. HTML 404. It's not there anymore. <gasps> it's not there anymore. Because it's a conspiracy. Because it's a freaking conspiracy. There's no better, there's no better <laughs> proof that That's it's the a conspiracy right besides that. Um, guys, I'll post the link in the, in the description uh, once this is up on YouTube if you guys really want to read the whole thing. But the civilian... So the FBI has a civilian air force... Uh, that's obscured behind fictitious companies. That's what the, that's what this Associated Press article found out. The AP traced at least 50 aircraft back to the FBI, identified more than 100 flights in 11 states over a 30-day period since late April. Uh, these are orbiting both major cities and rural areas. Uh, they have at least 115 planes, including nine, 90 Cessna aircraft. Uh, these were mentioned mentioned in a federal federal budget document from 2009. The aircraft are, are equipped with high-tech cameras, and in rare circumstances, technology capable of tracking thousands of cell phones. So the FBI has planes that are monitoring your cell phone activity. Seems legit. I don't know. It seems reasonable to me. Uh, and then there's also 13 fake companies that the FBI is using as fronts, such as FVX Research, KQM Aviation, NBR Aviation, and PXW Services. Now, my question is, would you trust a company called PXW Services? Why, why not? That sounds very generic. PXW, what would that stand for? Paul's X-rated... Precision X. Precision X... And Paul's X-rated... Window. Something. Precision right. X window services. Side note, the DEA also has a similar program with 92 planes. Okay. I think, and... I think a lot of these conspiracy, conspiracy theories are just generated by a bunch of people who are... Paranoid schizophrenics. And they all get together and they're like, yeah, that totally makes sense, man. Totally don't, makes don't undermine yeah. don't undermine my segment, damn you. No, I'm just it's, you know it's a good segment. Just telling you you're crazy. Conspiracies. You're insane. They're all out to get us. Mm. Especially Reddit. You're Wait, no, not Reddit. The FBI. <laughs> and Chrome. Same, same thing. They're working together. <laughs> the FBI, Reddit, Chrome, and 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 House Republicans are working with the tech syndicate forums. I know it's all connected. In a massive conspiracy. But we've uncovered it here for you guys today. <laughs> Let's drink some more beer. Yes, please. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, all uh, right. We're on to our, the last segment. Mm. And where you were at the beginning of this show. You you are? A, no, a little bit. Cup full of head. Too much head there. Mm. It happens. All right. Let's mm. talk about tech news, you guys. What do we got? I thought I had, I thought I had notes for this article, but You still have I tech do. news to do? Jesus. We're almost done. Okay. We're not done. We're, we're making record time here. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. All right. All right. Let's talk about tech news. Let's talk about AMD Radeon Fury. Not the X. The Fury. Non-X. Fury Core. Which uh, I believe we were promised uh, a launch date of what? February. Fe- February. <laughs> July. <laughs> 2017. Mid-July, I think, is when we're expecting the Fury. <laughs> Where'd you get February from? I don't know. I said Fury. Fury February. We're ah. going to start with F. Ah. Makes, makes sense. Okay. All right, so this is a videocards.com article, but I'm actually showing you guys the PC perspective uh, rehash of it. Uh, so the upcoming Fury, Radeon Fury card specs have been leaked and confirmed according to the report on video cards. Yep. The air-cooled card is said to have eight fewer compute units enabled and a slightly slower core clock. So let's scroll down here. This is, a, this is a good image right here. Let's see if the PC perspective image service will. All right, so here's your here's your comparison. Uh, that's the Fury X2 on the top left. Fury X next to that. Uh, the Fury and then the Nano. And the Nano is the it's a little tiny version that we're expecting at some point. Summer 2015. Okay. Hmm. Uh, July 14th is the purported launch date for the Fury, and these are going to be the ones that have third-party vendor uh, customization. Customization. So. Okay. Um, the one that they're actually showing, and I'll show you in a, mo- in a moment down below, is, oh no, I'll show you in a, in a moment on the other picture, um, is, a, I think, a Sapphire one. Uh, but Fiji Pro versus Fiji XT is the core. Uh, a few fewer stream cores, 3,584 versus 4,096. A few fewer TMUs, same amount of ROPs, purportedly. Uh, so you get a bit, a bit fewer teraflops of computing performance, 7.2 versus 8.6. Uh, 50 megahertz slower core clock. 
uh, same memory clock, same memory effective clock, same amount of memory, same memory bandwidth, uh, and the same power delivery, $550 instead of $650. So on paper, it seems like a reasonable cut down from the Fairy X. Uh, I'm very interested in seeing the third-party vendors uh, actual implementations of these. So the one we have here from Sapphire um, looks pretty cool. Uh, I mean, just from the initial look, it's got a back plate. Good job, Sapphire. So Good at this price at, at 550, we're pretty much talking com directly going head to head with the GTX 970, right? 970. Oh wait, I'm sorry. 970 is way cheaper than that. 980. The 980 is 500 right now. Yeah. Or 500 to 550, depending on what kind of version you get. Um, this would be, I'm guessing this will outperform the 980, and a bit more maybe expensive. even in some situations, butt heads with the 980 Ti. I hope, like I kind of hope. I mean, I feel like there's still, I feel like there's still more kind of latent power in, in the Fury X, for example, that we have yet to see exploited via um, driver optimization and that kind of thing, so... That's that's like something to look forward to, I guess. That would be pretty crazy <clears throat> if it could trade blows with the 980 Ti. But yeah, I that's, mean... That's pretty fat. Well, I mean, the, the Fury X, depending on the situation, can, especially at much higher resolutions, um, which uh, we'll have another story on in just a second. Yeah. But yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the, the Fiji-based the Fiji GPUs, um, and it's cool to see finally some uh, third-party uh, versions of these. Um, at least this one from Sapphire looks pretty good. So you'll note the PCB itself is still very short. It's still using the yeah. same PCB from the Fury X. Yeah. Um, but they have this much longer card because they've just they've added a bunch more. Um, obviously, Bigger you're gonna stack. you're gonna need a lot of uh, thermal dissipation there. Yeah. Um, for for this uh, HBM, because because you know it's not just the GPU, it's also the memory that's there and all that kind of stuff. I'm really so, liking the new Sapphire cards. Yeah. They are pretty sexy. Looks pretty nice. All right, so there's, uh, there's a quick look at that. And uh, next story is also somewhat related. Uh, the R9 Fury X has okay. been out for a couple weeks now, and um, we've seen a lot of benchmarks come out on it. But I wanted to specifically talk about this set of benchmarks that were posted by Tweaktown. And um, these are the R9 Fury X Crossfire benchmarks. So they're using two-way configuration, but they're not just testing up to like 4K. They're doing three-way 4K or okay. a triple 4K configuration. Um, so that's a total resolution, at least when they're um, laid out in the porch landscape mode. Yeah. Um, 11,520 by 2160. Nice. <laughs> uh, is pretty insane there. So just, just to run down. So the Fury X, at least a lot of the benchmarks have come out. Like if you're benchmarking it at 1080 or 1440, it's like, it's like OK. Yeah. It doesn't outperform. It doesn't do crazy good like you might expect it to. But once you get up to higher resolutions like 4K, it does much better. Here, uh, at this resolution, 11,520 by 2160, especially with Crossfire, and that's something I was really happy to hear, is the Crossfire scaling with these. Um, they saw some really good num really good performance, especially when they're comparing. And we'll scroll down here to show you some of the actual benchmark comparisons uh, against 980 Ti's in two-way uh, mm -hmm. SLI. Now, a 3x4K configuration, 11,520 by 2160 in landscape, or if you put it in portrait mode, it's 6,480 by 3840. Um, that is 1,492,992,000 pixels wow. per second that it's rendering. Uh, 1.4 billion pixels per second. Um, if you compare that to 1920 by 1080, uh, that does 124 million pixels per second. So it's something on the range of 10 times the number of pixels uh, ballpark, of course, compared to your typical 980 uh, rendering. So wow. the fact that it's able to even run a game at that resolution is like, holy crap. So that, that chart that chart here we're looking at is just looking at pixels rendered per second. Um, but also granted, that's still less than 8K. Oh, yeah. Um, which I thought was kind of interesting since we're, we're, I mean, there's a couple really, really early 8K stuff going on there. All right, so let's just roll over some of these uh, performance numbers. So uh, they did Heaven in 4K surround. 980 Ti is one on this one. Uh, Fury X still did a decent job, though. Kept a 7 FPS minimum. <laughs> uh, 13 FPS average. 
excuse me, Battlefield 4 is like where like suddenly you're like, holy crap. Hmm. So by the way, in all these charts, the top result here is the Fury, Fury X Crossfire. Bottom two results are Titan X SLI and 980 Ti SLI. So we can see in Battlefield 4, Fury X Crossfire dominated at that resolution. Battlefield 4 is also an AMD optimized game, right? With AMD evolved and whatnot. I don't know if Battlefield 4 was aligned, actually. I think I think I remember been. Battlefield 4 working, or I mean, because I always go with the games that actually have the logo that appears at the beginning, because that means the company actually yeah. invested with them. Well, and I don't for, think Battlefield 4 reason. has it. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Metro Last Light, uh, it was pretty much on par with uh, Titan X and 980 Ti. Middle Earth Shadow Shadow of Mordor, it was able to outperform them at least on the average with 50 FPS versus 43 and 44 for Titan X and 980 Ti. <laughs> Although the minimum here was still pretty low at 13. Yeah. With Thief, we had uh, it beat them again with 45 FPS average, although it still had a lower minimum. Um, Tomb Raider, uh, it didn't outperform them, I guess, which is interesting because Tomb Raider is an AMD optimized mm -hmm. game. But there you go. Maybe they didn't turn hair works on. Um, Bioshock Infinite uh, was another one where it outperformed. It had at least the same minimum and a better average. And then uh, the final thoughts here um, from Tweak Town was that they were very impressed. And that it seems like the higher resolution you go with Fury X's, the better the performance is. So I like that because it shows how this new method uh, with the HBM is really um, providing a lot of boons when it comes to uh, rendering video games at higher resolutions. And I think that's especially important for the next couple generations because um, <clears throat> anyone who might say, like, for instance, that AMD is going the wrong direction with this would be wrong because AMD has second generation HBM coming as well as NVIDIA. NVIDIA's Pascal will be HBM as well. Right. They're both going to be using the second generation of that technology. So we have a lot to look forward to. Um, probably next year is when we're going to be seeing those. But in the meantime, if you're going for crazy high resolutions, uh, maybe check out a Fury X. All right. I feel like they are, like either one's a good solution at that point. Yeah. yeah. Trading blows the whole time. Okay. Uh, a couple more stories here. I wanted to talk about this. This uh, this is a new egg story actually. Uh, Newegg has, uh, we're both former employees of Newegg, just full disclosure, although we're not really uh, working with them directly anymore. But and, uh, Newegg has a some, something of a reputation for taking on patent trolls. This is something I was always very proud of while I was working there, was that Newegg was like, patent trolls, you're stupid. All these other companies that are settling out of court with you know we're going to take you on. So this is a picture of Lee Cheng, uh, who is uh, Newegg's lawyer. I guess. I mean, I'm sure he has a more official. He bought me a shot that. once. He bought he bought you a shot. He did. No, Li Li Cheng is a nice guy. He's I pretty like, cool. I like Li. Um, anyway, this whole article is a lot of text. See, lots of text. Mm -hmm. Guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to boil it down for you mm. with a few no no notes here. All right. So uh, there's been a 20 month delay on this 2.3 million dollar patent loss. So in November 2013, Newegg faced off against a patent troll. Their name was TQP Development. Like okay. anytime you want to do shady business, you just make a really generic sounding company. That sounds name. exactly like the FBI. Fake, yeah, like fake the, name like the fake the FBI thing. TQP Development. I'm sure you guys create lots of products. You bring, you must bring lots of products to the market and make people lives better. <laughs> yeah, right. With that memorable name. All too. right. So they used U.S. patent number whatever to make a vast claim to basic internet encryption technology, saying that anyone using the common combination of SSL and the RC5 encryption algorithm was infringing on their patent, hmm. um, which is very common. Um, by the time of trial with Newegg, they, this company had already sued more than 120 other companies. They had earned $45 million in settlements wow. because companies are just like, rather than face the lawyer fees and everything of litigating, I'm just going to settle out of court. That's how patent trolls work. Wow. Uh, at trial, Newegg lost. So a jury trial uh, was what happened, and they ordered Newegg to pay $2.3 million to TQP. Um, now, that hasn't happened yet, but Newegg has had to set the money aside, according to this article. Um, and they can't appeal. They can't appeal this judgment because the judge in the case, U.S. District Judge Rodney Gilstrap, uh, hasn't entered a final judgment in 20 months, which is just like wow, a, like filing paperwork or something like that. Now, 
it's probably sick of seeing Newegg uh, in the court. Like, no, oh, it's no. you guys again. The reason is because this is the Eastern District of Texas, and this is where all these patent troll lawsuits are are, are brought to trial, or, or like, or, or first, I don't know the right, I don't know the right, the right term. That's where that's or where dealt with. That's why they're introduced. Hey, you're being sued in the Eastern District Court of Texas, uh-huh. or the Eastern District of te- Texas, and they're very Subpoenaed, friendly. They're very friendly mean. towards patent trolls and that sort of thing. So that's why, for instance, maybe this judge hasn't submitted this judgment in 20 months and counting. It's messed up. Um, so Newegg today uh, filed a petition. Uh, Newegg lawyers are calling the delay caused by Gil, Stra- Gil Strap's inaction 20 months excessive and unreasonable they've asked for the u.s court of appeals for federal for the federal circuit to issue a writ of mandamus which is latin i assume to consider their patent case immediately and to rule in their favor um the only reason i really bring this up was one to say uh good on you new egg for for continuing to 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 fight against patent trolls again that's something that i was always proud of while i was there and two would be that this might have some far further reaching implications because again this is a particular district in texas where patent trolls like to file lawsuits and the fact that newegg is going above the head of the of one of the one of the judges who commonly uh tries these suits um might set a precedent precedent going further for that going forward for future patent lawsuits and i hope that is the case because like the just the fact that like all these people go to the same place oh we're gonna file our lawsuit here yeah. because it's so they're so like doesn't that seem kind of fishy it does it seems very fishy yeah there's like some very like maybe ambiguous leading statements in the article about what kind like, of a cut are the judges in yeah, this town I getting from i don't these know lawsuits. what kind of benefit the judge is getting by not filing this lawsuit or for the so state long. or the city or whatever it is but on but on Newegg's side they've had to set aside the 2.3 million dollars from the settlement and they can't touch it right. so that's 2.3 million dollars of capital that just Newegg just has to have held. there right so obviously 20 months of not having access to 2.3 million dollars is a big deal is a big deal so company, anyway especially. that's why i want to bring that up all right one last story before we move on to cal's half of the show all righty and uh this is about intel we talked a little bit last week about intel and uh the so we have sky lake coming yes, and we, we thought cannon lake was going to be after that but we've had cabby lake Cabby. k-a-b-y uh inserted in between those and we're like what's the deal with that according to um rumors these are all rumors um, we might we're, we're, we're seeing a slowdown in Intel's production cycle uh, so you can see here the TikTok model this wonderful image here this is another PC perspective article by the way so you can see the TikTok right the TikTok works a new architecture die shrink new architecture die shrink that's yeah. how it keeps going over and over again so they made uh, for instance the Halo architecture was originally 45 nanometers that was a talk then they shrank it to 32 nanometers. That was a tick. Then they made Sandy Bridge at 32 nanometers, new microarchitecture. That was a talk. Right. Then they shrank it to 22 nanometers. That was a tick. Mm-hmm. And on and on down the line. So we have Haswell, and uh, we already had what was what we've been calling a double talk last year when they did the Haswell refresh or the Devil's Canyon, as they were called. Right. But now we're seeing not just a double talk with Cabby Lake, but they're also even pushing the dates back of them as well. So that's what this article is pointing out: is that you know TikTok was supposed to be a yearly cycle. It right. was it was supposed to be every year they kind of have the cycle. Yeah. And for those of us who have uh, attended Computex, it was it was nice because every year at Computex, Intel would have a new CPU launch, and that was kind of where they went. They they came out with it and everything, and that was all kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but this is definitely a slowdown. Uh, Cabby Lake is asynchronous according to the TikTok cadence. Um, between Sky Lake and Cannon Lake, it's inserted in, in between. But now, Cabby Lake might not even launch until late 2016. Hmm. So not mid next year, wow. but late next year, similar to Sky Lake, which, according to rumors, might launch in the next month or so. Right. Uh, which is not Computex. Computex was a couple months back. Yeah. Cabby Lake might be even pushing back as well. Jeez. Cannon Lake then could be pushed back to some time in 2017. So this this has to be due to the 
like, I guess the shortcoming of AMD yeah. recently and not being not being able to stay competitive with Intel. They're and not so, as pressured to release on this yes. their traditional TikTok cycle because they were doing a pretty good job of keeping that momentum going when AMD was actually a, a valid contender and they were actually putting out some decent stuff. That's now right. it's like we haven't even seen a you know a flagship GPU or I'm sorry a CPU from it, from AMD in a while since bulldozer bulldozer sorry. And I think that it's has like probably an episode of, of slurred speech. I know, and Not that's as bad as last week. That's though. probably like like given Intel some relief in a way, but it's also made them sluggish. Yeah, I think, and I think uh, eventually they're. Gonna get some heat for it. I mean, if they're not already getting it now, I mean, I could see. Why well, I mean, we're we're upset. trying to we're trying to give them a little bit of heat, but I mean, I think really the only people who can give Intel heat is AMD. So that's what we need to look forward to. Zen, the Zen yeah. is AMD's new actual new architecture, their first actual new architecture in quite some time. And again, like even if Zen is equivalent to Fury X or to, to to Fiji and Fury X, to my mind, because Fury X. Like, like some in terms people, of performance or whatever? Some people were disappointed. Some people were like, I expected more. I expected to come and destroy NVIDIA or whatever. But yeah. it was still competitive. Yeah. And if Zen can still be competitive with Intel the way Fury X um, so far has been competitive with NVIDIA, then I think we'll see maybe a reworking of this. The uh, TikTok. Or, or at least of their, their, their launch schedule and everything. Because that's, that's the only thing that can really push them. Um, I think as far as Intel goes, but um, hey, I want to say thank you to all you guys who, who have joined us live because I Indeed. don't, I don't, I don't always look at our numbers, but we're around three, three forty right now. This is this might be, and I think this might be our high. So guys, yeah. thanks for joining us, and we really uh, appreciate you guys having us watching the live show. You guys are monsters. Or joining us here for the live show. Yep. Um, we are going to end my half of the show, uh, but if you're don't live, go if anywhere. you're here live, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with Kyle's half of the show. Got so it's invariably just a little bit, not quite as good as my half, but you, it's still got some good stuff. What do you have? What do you, you got? We got some pip my PC coming up. No, I don't. I don't need to fluff it up. Some more tips. It's, it's, <laughs> it's that good. Like, I don't All right. need to talk about it's it. It's that good. It's gonna All be right. awesome. Just stick around for it, guys. All we'll right. be right back. Thanks everyone for being here. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe button and check out other episodes too because we've been doing this for a while now. This is our 20th episode. That's right. And uh, go look at Kyle's channel. He's hit 100,000 subscribers. Woo-hoo. Someone bought a shirt. Someone, someone else bought a shirt. Hey. Fantastic. Thanks Orlando. All right guys, we'll be right back with right. the second half of the show coming Goodbye. soon.